very important that we distinguish the difference between a parameter and a statistic. In fact, this course, this discipline in math, is called statistics. By the end of this video, you should be able to defend why it's called statistics. Here's the definition. A parameter is a numerical characteristic for an entire population. If it is the mean of an entire population, it is a population mean and is a parameter. But if the numerical characteristic, like a mean or a standard deviation, only came from a sample uh, that was taken out of a bigger population, then that numerical characteristic, that mean or that standard deviation, is a statistic. So a statistic comes from a sample and a parameter comes from a population. So here we go, the mean age of engineers in the U.S., an entire population. Let's suppose we know that the mean, the numerical characteristic, is 39.6 years. Since it is the mean of an entire population, it is the population mean, it is a parameter, and we use mu, the Greek letter mu, to represent the mean for a population. But if instead someone took a survey like the New York Times and they got a mean average, well that mean average only came from a sample, so we give it this symbol, x bar. So this is a sample mean. That's a population mean, a sample statistic, a population parameter. Uh, what if we want the, the mean scores on the Unit 1 test for the Period 2 class? Maybe the mean score was 852.5. Is that a population mean or is it a sample mean? Well, by golly, it depends. If we're going to consider if all we're interested in is the Period 2 class, then that's our universe, that's our whole population. And if all the kids in that class took the test, then we're done. That's a population mean. That's the mean for this whole population of interest. So that would be mu. It would be a population mean. But if instead, if we take this one class out of the eight classes of AP Stat, then that's a sample. It's not a very good sample because it's not a cross-section, but it would just be a subset of the entire population. So now we would consider that mean average to be a sample mean so now it would be x bar, it would be a statistic. What about proportion of teachers nationwide who have a dog? It's 0.323. Well, that's a proportion and that's a parameter. That's p, population proportion, because it's from the entire nation. It's a, it's a whole population of uh, the US. But what if we have proportion of teachers who have a dog in a recent sample of 1,300? Now this is a sample proportion, so it's a statistic. We'll learn later, we haven't dealt with it yet, and we're not gonna deal with it in this unit, but I just wanna make the, the point. This is a sample proportion, that's a population proportion, and those are the symbols we use. What if we said the proportion of teachers in Colorado who have a dog is .347? Well, you know what? We're probably not taking a sample of the whole country because we're specifically talking about Colorado. So if we indeed have looked at all the teachers in Colorado, and this is the proportion, then this would be a population proportion p. It would be a parameter, not a statistic, because we looked at every teacher, theoretically, in the state of Colorado. Proportion, not a statistic. So here we go. The numerical characteristics are these. If you've looked at an entire population, whether it's the entire US, or just Colorado, or just one county, then your mean is a population mean, mu. Your standard deviation is a population standard deviation, sigma. Variance is the square of the standard deviation, and the population proportion is p. These are parameters. They come from populations. But over here, if it came from a sample, then these numerical characteristics are sample means. Sample standard deviation, sample variance, and sample proportion, they are statistics because they came from a sample. We haven't looked at an entire population. We didn't take a census of the entire population. It's sample data, statistics. So why is the discipline of, or subject of statistics called statistics? In real life, you might be interested in knowing what's the mean level of education, how many years of education in a certain community. Maybe we need to know that because those demographics dictate whether our business will be successful in a certain area. Well, if we're able to look at everybody in the entire area and find that the mean years of education is like 14.2 years, then that would be a population mean. But in reality, we usually do not know what the population parameter is. So we learn how to take good random samples, and from those samples, we find the mean, but it's a sample mean, it is a statistic. But this statistic should be a good point estimator of the parameter, the true population mean, that we're really interested in. 
So the power of statistics is learning to take good random samples, use probabilities to estimate how far off this statistic could be in estimating the population parameter, but that's why it's called statistics. We use good quality statistics to estimate parameters, and that's where the big money's at. We need that information. All right, now, if you have a mean, whether it's a population mean or a sample mean, the formula is the same. Add up all the scores, divide by n, the sample size. But here's where it gets different. If it's population standard deviation, you take the radical, the square root of 1 over n times, we learned this formula the other day right here. But, um, and I don't know why AP wouldn't just want to write it this way. Take the sum of all the deviations squared and divide by n, the sample size. The radical of that will be your population standard deviation. But if you took a sample, the formula is different. You end up dividing by n minus 1. Now that has to do with unbiased estimators and things like you don't need to know that. You just need to know that the formulas are slightly different for standard deviation. So you have to decide, does my data represent a whole population? If so, I have to use sigma, the standard deviation I get by dividing by n. But if my data represents a sample, then my sample standard deviation, s, is slightly different. I divide by n minus 1 instead of n. And note that we wouldn't have mu, the population mean, we'd be forced to use the sample mean and see how far each score is away from that. That again is why we're dealing with the statistic here in a sample, and it's why we divide by n minus 1 instead of n. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, right here, we have test scores from a class. Okay, so there's eight scores here. Did it come, is this a whole population or is it a sample? Well, it's probably a sample. So if it's a sample, then the mean would be what? Mu or x bar? Well, if it's just a sample from a bigger population, this is x bar. Our sample mean is 80. And which standard deviation would we use? We can either use this one or this one. Now take a look. We get that off the calculator. If we go into the stat function, oh, I think I hit the calculator too hard. Come on, baby. If we go into the stat function, and we go into the lists, we put all of our data in there, and we go calculate it, we go back to stat, and over to calc, and we go one bar stats, and we tell it list one, and we calculate this, notice that the calculator is gonna give you two different standard deviations, S and sigma. That's sample standard deviation, and this is population standard deviation. So you have to know, if this is a population, like we're down to eight students, and, uh, now I chased all the others away, so I have less grading to do. We're down to eight students, so this class is an entire population. Then the standard deviation would be sigma, and it's this guy right here. But if these eight scores are a sample from a bigger population, then we are to use S, the sample standard deviation. That's 10.56. <coughs> um, so the calculator will give you the information, but you have to be smart enough and, and understanding enough to know which one to report as your uh, standard deviation. Uh, so, we got to make sure we understand what is a population parameter and what is a sample statistic for us to be able to proceed, and that'll do it for, uh, for this lesson. So, but parameters and statistics are huge. That's a huge concept. We got to make sure we've got this thing down as we go forward.